Gonzalez, Chair of the Planning Board, and I call this meeting June 1st, 2021 of the Brockton Planning Board to order. This meeting is being recorded in, in accordance with, recorded in accordance with the government order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Chapter 220. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the Planning Board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send comment or question to the chair via question and answer function. Be available on the city's web pages. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure account accuracy. As your name is called, please indicate that you are present. Okay. We have Larry Hassan. Here, present. James Sweeney. Here. Sam Abros. Here. And Tony Gonzalez, present. Okay, Pam. Okay, uh, we have the review and acceptance of the minutes from 5 or 21. So if you all read them. Um... Yes, uh, someone like to make a motion to accept the minutes? Motion to accept the minutes from May 4th, 2021. A second. As uh, Sam was not there, uh, she can't second and she can't vote on this, but uh, second. Jim okay. can. All right, thank you, Jim. Um, roll call. Okay, we have an extension request for 93 Center Street you people will all think, think notice as the um, make a motion for the extension. Okay, we have two sets of ANR plans. And they are looking to combine them all into just one new puzzle. So we need a motion. This A34 North Pearl Street. Motion to approve endorsement of the NR plan for 34 North Pearl Street. Second. Okay. Roll call Larry Hassan. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Sam Mavros. Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm moving, oops, Scott. Whoops, where did you go, Scott? I don't want that. Scott. Um, Rob, I can't move anybody, Rob. I just moved Scott. You know, all I can do is chat with them. That won't let me move anybody. I see them. Um, 88 Myrtle Street is one of those situations where these are two uh, buildings on one parcel that existed prior to the time of the enactment of zoning. So although the parcels are going to be very tiny and probably not buildable if anything were to happen to them, um, they can be separated. Scott? Um, I, that's basically it, Pam. Chapter, uh, chapter 41, uh, section 81L allows us under an A&R plan to divide property that has uh, two buildings 
that were on the property prior to zoning. In this case, both of the buildings were constructed in 1925. Uh, so it affords us the opportunity to divide the property as long as each of them has frontage access and area, in which case both of these lots do. Um, so it's just a, a moment to endorse the plan. They're both multifamilies, right? They have enough parking there and all that too? Uh, they do, Mr. Hassan. We created a uh, parking easement on lot B. The, the entire property, the entire two lots are basically all paved. So uh, they have the ability to come in off of Myrtle Street and there's about eight parking spaces between the two lots. <sighs> Madam Chair, can I ask a question? Sure, yes. Um, that law that allows you to divide the parcel um, with buildings, would that be even if the property, the two buildings, one was a garage and one was a, a residential building? I think there's... Yes, it, sir. Yeah, yeah, it just says okay. buildings. It doesn't so specify... It doesn't matter what the structures are. Uh, if there's two separate structures, it can be divided. Okay, and the applicant, um, is, is that the correct owner of the, the applicant? Because we have a real problem. I went down there and looked at it today and the people that own the house on the corner of Myrtle and Third erected a stone wall and a fence which now blocks the second egress to that home uh, that sits in the back. They can't really get out of their door. The door won't open completely. And when they open the door, they're kind of stuck in the alley. Okay. So it's a, kind of a dangerous situation. Um, even though there's an egress access um, allowed, they've right. blocked it with a wall and a fence. Well, uh, yeah, Mrs. Uh, Miss Reese, who we have listed as the owner applicant, she just recently bought it uh, within the last month. So she's uh, a, a new owner of the property. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to know who to cite in the morning. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. So does someone want to make a motion? to endorse this A&R. Motion to approve 88 Merle Street. Second. And a second. Okay. All right, roll call, Larry Hassan. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Sam LaBrose. Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Okay, thank you folks. Good night. You're welcome. Thank you. Good, good night. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, before we go any further, um, I do want to remind uh, the attendees that we are following the posted agenda and um, most people are here for the two large definitive subdivisions and those are at the end of our agenda this evening. So um, Lou, uh, if you hang on for just uh, a couple minutes, we shall be getting to those um, shortly. And then when you want to uh, once the applicants have made their presentations and the board has asked questions, then they open it up for um, the public hearing. So we'll be getting to you shortly. Thank you. Um, we have three Phil, requests you... for lot releases. Uh, 20 Charlotte Street. And all these are in your um, Google Drive. 20 Charlotte Street, the road was uh, completed. The utilities are in and we received the approval letters from DPW. Same story with Granite Street extension. This was an old subdivision, uh, the, but the road had never been completed. The um, builder walked away from it. Somebody else purchased the remaining lot in went in and finished all the roadway. And he has also received his approval from DPW. Lots two, three and four Quincy Street are Jim Morrissey subdivision. This one's a little bit different. The plan is waiting to be signed. It's in the city clerk's office right now. There'll be two subdivision plans for you to sign sometime next week. Um, because we don't meet next month, in order that the applicant doesn't miss 
30 days. He's asked that we release these lots pending his recording of the plan and covenant. And we've done this before on for a, when we miss July. If you vote to release those lots, they'll be held by the office until he gives us the um, proof that the plan is on record and that the covenant has gone on record. You mean with, with the signatures? Correct. Right? If you haven't signed this plan yet, this, this plan is um, in the city clerk's office waiting for his endorsement. So mm -hmm. Rice was going to pick him up tomorrow morning and I was going to arrange to have you come in and sign everything that needs to be signed all in one day. So you're not making multiple trips back. So it'll be sometime next week when everything's set. But um, that's the only one that's a little different. And so if you vote to release those lots, they'll be held by the office until we receive right. his recording. Okay. Everything else is ready to go. All right. That's clear to me. Does, do any other board members have questions? No, I, I don't have any questions. It's okay for us to... You um, can take them together. Right, to take okay. them together, but on lots two, three, and four, just pending recording and planning the plan right. of, and covenant, correct? Right, correct. And I, I'm quite sure it'll get done, but if it's going to be held, they can't do anything until right, they're released from the department. Right. Okay. Um, I don't have any other questions. I don't have any okay. questions either. So I want to make a motion. Motion to approve uh, lot releases 20 Charlotte Street, lot two, three, and four Quincy Street, uh, Quincy Street pending recording and plan covenant. Second. Okay, roll call. What about lot three Granite Street? Do we have to do that one separately? Oh, oh no. I'm sorry, I missed that because you kind of faded out, Pam, on that. I didn't really hear. Oh, sorry. So. That's the same thing as Charlotte Street. He, re, he okay. completed the road where, work and okay. we have his DPW letter. Okay, so in addition, a motion to approve Granite Street. Second. Okay, roll call Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Sam LaBrose? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Okay. All right, any other housekeeping items, Pam? I am done. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna re review the agenda, but before I do, we'd like to ask the applicants, um, due to the long agenda and, and being considerate of everyone's time to keep your presentations to five minutes. And if any um, residents have questions for uh, speaking in groups, if maybe you could designate one speaker or, um, Keep your questions, comments to 30 seconds or less, please. Okay. Number one, permission to remove to zoning board. That's been withdrawn for 6070 Field Street. That was he, they. So oh, continue to August. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. He changed that. Continue to the August meeting. Okay. Um, number two, permission to return to zoning board. This has been withdrawn. This is 16 Albert Street. Mm -hmm. Number three, permission to return to zoning board, 63 Lafoy Street. Number four, permission to re return to the Zoning Board of Appeals, property is 25 East Battle Street. We have number five, site plan approval, 159 Tory Street. Number six, definitive subdivision. That one's continued to August 3rd. Okay. Number seven, definitive subdivision. Map 16, Route 188, part of Plan 97, Pleasant Street. We have number eight, definitive subdivision. Map, oh, I'll just skip down to Rockland, 97, Pleasant Street. Okay, did I catch them all? Looks like I did. All right. We have up first. Lafoy, 63 Lafoy Street. Attorney Paul Clancy.
And Pam, I've now remade you co-host, so you should be able to get in. Oh, I see the applicant is here. Yeah, I see him. But I don't see the lawyer. What is PK Boston? Why has he moved already? So who is the applicant? Paul Fancy and Express Realty. Attorney Paul Clancy Express Enterprises. Express Enterprises is there. Paul Clancy is there. Where is he? Uh, is that PK Law? PK Boston no, Law? it's not. And I don't oh, know who that, right. that's the wrong yeah, office. I don't know. I think Paul Clancy, if you're there, would you raise your hand, please? I'm guessing the applicant will have to do it himself. The applicant's here. Right, and I am trying to move him and he is not moving. Yeah, I've tried a few times. It's, yeah, he's just not, they're not. Okay, um, do we want to try the next one and come back to this? No, he's here. But trying to move him to panelists, it says. Okay, everybody stop doing that there. Okay. So he's the applicant. He's a panelist now. So if you turn on your camera and uh, make your presentation, please. Express Enterprises, you're muted. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get a hold of Attorney Clancy. Um, for some reason, I can't reach him right now. I'm not sure what's going on. He knew we had this meeting today. Would you like us to move you on the agenda for now? See if you can yes. reach him? Yes. All right. We'll go to Attorney Robert. So when, when you do get a hold of Mr. Clancy, let uh, raise your hand. So just to signify that you have him or okay. actually do a Q and A, do a Q okay. and A okay. and uh, we'll know. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, so up next, 25 East Battle Street, Attorney Robert Pellegrini. Oh, that was PK. I'm sorry, Pam. That was PK Boston. Okay. Okay, I've just promoted him. And I don't know if there's anybody with him. Holding. Attorney Pellegrini, is there anybody else with you? Hi, sorry, I had to log off and log back in. Um, <clears throat> my client should be here. Um, uh, I see him. That would be Barzola. Yep, okay. And uh, I think perhaps Ed Jacobs would be joining as well, but I'm not so sure. There's a Miguel Barzola also, is that also? Yep, yep. What's going on? Eddie J, is that Ed Jacobs? Um, trying to find him. I, I think probably, yeah. Oh, there's Eddie J, yes, hand raised. Okay, I see people. So we're just waiting for Alfredo Barzola to turn on their I camera. See, I see Miguel Barzola. This is Alfredo too, okay. I'm comfortable with just Miguel and, it, and his wife, Laura. Okay. All right, thank you. Please start your presentation. 
All right, sorry about that. I had to um, shut my computer off, so I'm not sure where you left off, but this is um, regarding Barzola Holdings LLC. Uh, we were before the ZBA. Uh, recently, the application uh, was for half a dozen residential units to um, convert it from what was there previously, which was, uh, it was a mixed use uh, church worship um, was really what it was for. So the, um, the owners didn't feel like uh, reopening as a church would really be the greatest thing for the neighborhood, uh, mainly because of parking. And um, so the proposal was just to convert um, the front building um, had uh, the first floor and the downstairs um, that was used for church worship. And then the back building has been used uh, just basically for storage. It is fully sprinklered, but um, that's how it's been used previously. So um, the ZBA's response was that uh, they were concerned about um, basically a you know visual buffer from the adjacent uh, use, which is sort of an um, automobile repair. And um, the, um, the reaction that we have to that with these plans was to add a um, vinyl fence sort of along that whole part of the lot line and then to protect that fence on, uh, with a uh, guardrail. And then, um, some of the other concerns, I think we just sort of, uh, one was that um, they didn't like, uh, originally there was proposed to be parking adjacent to the actual structure. So by reducing the units by one, um, we were able to eliminate that parking entirely. And uh, those were really the, the major changes to the plan uh, that we're trying to come back and propose. So what I was hoping to do is at least get a dialogue with the planning board to see what you thought about that. We thought the changes were significant and um, significant enough that perhaps we could get back before the ZBA. Um, we really didn't have a chance to dialogue at all with them during the hearing. So uh, we certainly would have agreed to all this had we, but that just wasn't one of our options. Um, do you have the plan or do you need me to try to put it up on Zoom? Um, I did not download it. So if you could put it up, okay, that would be easier. All right, this is gonna be quite a feat for me. So give me one second, probably less than 10 seconds. Eddie, if you happen to have it, I'll take it from you. Um, but all right, let's see. I think we can do this. Share screen. Post the ten days. Um, yeah. And then, am I sharing? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, this was the um, variance plan. The uh, Ed, please jump in, but um, as you can see, uh, I think you can, hopefully you can see my cursor. These are the four spots that we were able to remove with this change. And then um, right along this line was the concern that the ZBA- uh, excuse, excuse me, we, we, I can't see your cursor. Can anyone else? No. Okay. No? Um, okay. Sorry we, about that. We still see part of your share drive, not just the whole plan. So I don't know if you can enlarge the corn. Okay. Um, is this easier for you to see? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Thank you for bringing that up. So uh, these four spaces here were the ones that by eliminating one unit, uh, we were able to remove. And then th this lot line here, is uh, where you know their concern was about the visual impact um, between the two you know uses, which are obviously one's commercial, one is residential primarily. Um, that's that's primarily 
what we were trying to address. They, they brought up uh, something we weren't even aware of quite a bit before the current owners even owned the parcel. Um, there was some, um, some negative uh, result in a ZBA application, which was, was a long time before. No one's brought it up to me. And I think it was regarding the two residential units that are there currently. But um, our point was that really, um, this is something that's already there. Obviously, my thought on it was it would be better as an economically viable property than one that's just lying around dormant. Um, so this directly impacts the, their major comments. Um, the ZBA, there was a motion to approve and we lost that by one vote. So um, this is pointed directly at the two comments that we did here um, during that hearing. So let me see. So can I ask Ed, um, is there anything else that you can bring up, Ed? Actually, is that still just, on call? He just got bounced. Where is he? Okay. I saw him there a minute ago. Hang on just a second, please. That's my luck. Okay. Oh, there he is. So, and Ed should be a panelist now. All right. Hey, Eddie, do you have any anything you can add here? You're on mute. Just um, by doing the by implementing the changes that uh, Attorney Pellegrini brought up, uh, we increased the uh, green space. And um, another reason why the um, over where the parking spaces are on the eastern side of the property. Uh, there's a parking easement for the neighbors over there that own the garage. And the concern with the zoning board was, um, you know, who was going to police that parking? Were they going to park, you know, on our property or whatever? So there's parking stops along that, um, those parking spaces. And there's a chain link fence. And the, I mean, there's a fence going up in the, in the idea of the parking stops would be to help with the, the snow plowing, smashing into the fence. Um, and there's guardrail on both sides of the fence, correct, Rob? Yes, that's correct. Okay, that was, uh, that was all I could come up with, yeah. Okay, anything else? Is your presentation complete? I, I could just maybe add that I, I did obviously see the, uh, planning department's report come in this morning and I, I did take a quick look at, um, you know, uh, Randy, the Board of Appeals of Nantucket, which indicated that, you know, it's within the board's purview, of course, but um, something as small as a cosmetic change is really adequate for you to send it back to the ZBA if you saw, you know, obviously you'd have to agree with that, but I certainly didn't want to not look that up without before I came to you. So I will stop sharing so everybody has a normal screen. All right, I'll, I'll open it up. Um, it doesn't appear there's been a substantial change. You are in a residential district. Um, there's two apartments there now. You could do three but not five. I think. Um, Madam, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, the applicant has presented, uh, or the applicant's attorney has presented a lot of new information that we did not have when reviewing the, um, the application to return to ZPA um, for our staff report. The only thing that was on the uh, ZBA letter of denial was that there was no hardship. Um, and, and obviously, if the board determines there's no hardship, it's very difficult to overcome that hardship uh, or lack of hardship. 
Um, so I don't know about, or, or, or nothing was described in the app, uh, in the denial that there was, you know, uh, needed a buffer between the parking and that there was um, uh, all the other things that the applicant provided. So um, I and think we need to take a, a look should, at that. That should have come from zoning in the zoning report? Well, it should have been in their zoning denial letter. Um, if there were other concerns that the zoning board had, um, right now the only zoning board, the only concern that we know of from the zoning board was that the applicant had no hardship and therefore had no grounds for a variance. Rob, you're, you're right. I saw that in their denial. I don't know what the protocol is when you see something that doesn't really reflect the discussion at the hearing, but it was in the middle of COVID and it was difficult to get a hold of people over there. So I sort of let it ride. Um, but what I said to you tonight, I would uh, stake my reputation on as that was, those were the issues raised at the hearing. Okay. Madam, Madam Chair, can I address the applicant? Yes. Uh, can you just highlight your major changes briefly again, please? And your site Absolutely. Plan. Yeah. Let me see if I can just quickly share it again. Um, so uh, I think I've I, got a bigger, I've got a bigger version if you don't mind me sharing oh, my share, screen. Sure. How do I stop? Okay. So unshare and I will share. Oh, great. Okay. Oops, let me go down a click. That's much better. Thank you, Rob. So, Rob, this one's much better because it shows the, the one they denied on the left and they show what we're proposing on the right. Okay, great. So, um, all right, so what you're all seeing on the left side um, is showing a significantly larger paved driveway on the western side of the property, which is to the left of the building uh, between that, yes, right there. And uh, we eliminated that. Um, and then, and, and well, I'm, I'm viewing this for the first time, so. Uh, so, and then the, the other thing is right along the parking easement, sort of on the easterly side, sort of on the opposite end, uh, the concern there was they wanted to make sure that the residential use remained sort of, you know, boppered from the commercial use. So that was exactly the reason why we're proposing the vinyl fence protected by the guardrails. Um, and uh, obviously, as, as you can see, um, in reducing the number of parking by four, we had to reduce the number of units. So we took the large building in the back there, which is actually part of, you know, that main building too, but that was originally proposed to be two units. So now we're just proposing that to be one unit. I think it's a four bedroom. I'm sure my client will correct me if I'm wrong about that. The one unit in the back is four bedrooms? Yes. And how many bedrooms are the other? Everything else is two. There's uh, so there's uh, two on the first floor, two on the second floor. They're both, uh, they're all um, two bedroom units. And I'll, I'll add that, um, the owner is local. They work um, in Brockton, live in, in Brockton and in the area. They're rather large, large family, but they're all from Brockton. And so now the new plan has how many parking spaces? Eight. Um, this is a conversion. So uh, you need, um, 
one parking space per unit. So technically you would need five units under the, uh, under the uh, bylaw, but um, you know, it's always better to have a couple more. Okay, all right, very good. Okay. Any other questions from the planning board before I open up to public um, hearing? Madam Chair, I, I just want to point out uh, or, or ask your question again. You're looking for five units and not six. That's that that's one that's one of the changes. Yes. Okay. So, and I, I do want to point out though that your the drawing that is here uh, does say a chain link fence typical as opposed to the vinyl fence typical. Um, okay. Um, that's an error. Point. I'm 100% sure it's vinyl. Um, we can- Yeah, we'll get on Ed Jacobs that. about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. That's definitely an error on that particular plan that you're staring at. Let's see if I can get you something better. No, that's okay. We can make a note of that in, in their okay. discussions. Right. Adam Chair, we have a really long night. Yeah. Any other questions from the planning board before we open up to public comment? Madam Chair, it's Larry. Um, I have a couple questions. Um, they're talking about there's a parking easement. Is there an easement already in force with the abutter, which is the, it looks like the body shop and things like that. As I see existing wide right of way and then parking easement. And by doing what they're requesting, um, this is going to become, if it gets approved, a non-conforming lot. And I don't know how the zoning board is still going to fly with that. So those are actually three questions. Sorry. I don't know if they, anybody can answer that. Um, I think I can try to address that, Larry. Um, the parking easement has been on record and in place for a while. It's recorded, I believe, just on a plan. Um, so it is a restraint that we had here, um, that neighbor wants to continue to use it. And I believe uses it quite heavily. Um, what, what were the other ones? I'm sorry. It was just, you know, looking at just the notes I have here, um, even going to a five residential unit with you, you're still looking at a lot size that's below what what is recommended by a uh, three zoning of 1600 square feet. So it's gonna become a non-conforming lot, I assume, unless I can, somebody correct me on that, which I think may be a problem with zoning. I don't wanna set you up to fail, but that's just a question I have. That's, um, that's correct, Larry. Actually, when we were before the board originally, it would have been a larger variance request than it would be now. Currently, with um, the number of units we're proposing, the variance would be for 3,700 square feet, approximately, because it's um, the, the uh, bylaw requires 12,000 for the first three units plus 2,000 for each on top of that. So, in our case here, we would um, we'd, we'd uh, require what is it? Uh, Lawyers don't do math, um, 12, 14, 1600. Um, so actually it would be, uh, we're just under 2000 square feet, I think. Shai, don't, don't check my math, I'm, I'm trying no, to- No, that's fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all I had for questions. Okay. okay. But there's a good point, you're still short on the lot size for five units, um, four would make more sense. Madam Chair, may I just ask one question, please? Sure. Oh, and, and who was it that's going to police that easement? I, I think Mr. Um, Hassan talked about that. I didn't hear the answer to that question. Sure, okay. The, the policing of the easement is, is done between the two parties. So the uh, party that actually benefits from the easement, which would be the neighbor, um, you know, obviously they have certain rights as holders of that easement. So, you know, if um, my client tried to infringe upon that in any way, they would have a right to sort of, you know, 
I guess, go to court and request relief. But the uh, easement's been on record for so long that, um, you know, they'd have other rights that go along with that time frame too. So um, it's really certainly nothing that we could ever unilaterally undo. If I may, that easement's been in existence for a long time, as well as the right of way to get to the back property. It's not something that we're creating. This isn't a situation that we've created now. The situation is probably going to be better uh, if approved because a fence will be up and that will actually separate what is now one property with an easement and a right of way on it to be more like two properties because of the fence. All right, we're going to open it up for public comment. Do you have anyone with um, their hand raised? Yes, Madam, Madam Chair, I have my hand raised. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, before we get into the public comment, I believe the lot is a little over 1,400 square feet or 14,000 square feet, 14, excuse 000. me. Um, 14,000. Just, just as, a, as an observation, um, with four units, you would be by right and you wouldn't need to go to the zoning board. Five units makes you, you need a variance. And in order to get that variance, you, you're here to go through the return to ZBA. Um, the biggest issue though, is that the zoning board has already said, you don't have a hardship for a variance for six units. You think you have a hardship for five units, but I haven't seen a, a hardship presented and you might want to split the difference and say, okay, we'll do four units by right and be done with it. But I'm just putting that out yeah. there right now. Um, um, you can always send it back with that. Also, if you decided to send it back, you could send it back with that specific recommendation. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't making the variance argument before the planning board. Um, I think they have one, but it wasn't something that I wanted to take your time up with, to be honest. Uh, I could get into that, but I'm guessing Pam would give me the, please don't do that nod. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Yes, okay. It went so, over your five um, minutes. <laughs> so is yeah. there anybody, any attendees, anybody from the public who would like to question or comment on this project? please use the raise hand feature, or you can write your question in the Q&A and we will read your question online. I don't see anyone. I don't see anyone raising their hand. Okay. And Madam Chair, proceed. So I definitely the vinyl fence with the, um, Guardrail is important on the plan. I strongly advise to go to four units, um, but that would be your decision. Other planning board members, somebody want to make a motion? Now, um, just FYI, for the two new members of the board, the chair cannot make a motion. She can only accept a motion. And can you also further um, share with the uh, planning board members, Rob, if they wanted to follow my suggestion, how they would vote, how they would need to um, vote? If the planning board, if somebody were interested in making a motion that um, to, to allow, a motion to allow the applicant to return to ZBA with a five unit project, provided that the chain link fence along the easement is replaced with a vinyl fence, you would say so moved. But she suggested a four unit. That was my first go at it. Now, if you recommend that it go back, well, it wouldn't need to go back to ZBA if it were a four unit. 
well, but you have to take some action here somewhere. Right. And do they need all four votes? Yes, they do. They do need all four votes. Okay. All right, any other questions from the planning board? Someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Uh, motion to return to planning board provided chain link fence is upgraded to vinyl. Um, you mean zoning board? I'm sorry, zoning yes. board to ZBA. Yep. And you, is that motion for right. five five units then? If you're motion saying return. for five, motion for five units. Uh, if you want to repeat it, I will. And is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, roll call. Larry Hassan. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Sam Abrose. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. No. You failed to carry. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, board members. All right. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. All right. Next, we have site plan approval for 159 Tory Street. Who is speaking for this? Thorny Lee Golf Association. Yeah, he's there. He should have been moved. Brandon Kling, there we yep. are. Daniel Serber. I brought over Brendan Kling. I'll, I'll be presenting Daniel Serber and then Brandon Kling's here for uh, help with civil water. On your mark, get set, go. Okay, so uh, again, my name is Daniel Serber. I'm the Senior Director of Development for Next Grid Inc. Uh, we're proposing a ground mounted fixed tilt one megawatt DC solar facility with battery storage on about three acres of land uh, at the north end of the Thorny Lee golf course. Um, this project is set back over 300 feet uh, from the nearest home structure and over 400 feet from the nearest right of way. Um, the plot is adjacent to the staging area for the landscaping of the golf course. Uh, and those won't interrupt with golf or be vis visible from the course itself, nor from homes or public roads. Uh, we're proposing 2,418 solar modules affixed to steel racking with no moving parts, so fixed tilt. Um, we're gonna utilize three 166 kilowatt string inverters. So those are smaller, uh, less impactful than a large central inverter. Um, this will be connected to a self-contained battery storage system, which also has a built-in fire suppression system, which utilizes uh, water uh, from an attached 440, 540 liter water injection skid. Um, so we use no chemicals in our panels for pest control, for weed control, and nothing to do with our battery storage system fire suppressant. I know that's been a big topic of conversation in Massachusetts, but we only use water. Um, this project was approved unanimously by the Conservation Commission on April 21st. Um, the system cuts down no trees, uh, it makes no noise that will be audible to any abutters. It won't be seen by any residents. Um, it doesn't add traffic, it doesn't add septic, it doesn't um, add any strain to the school district and has no negative effect on the community. Um, proposed Conversely, generates income, tax income for the town, uh, the city of Brockton. Um, it generates income for Thorny Lee, which is an institution uh, in the city. Um, and it also uh, helps fulfill the state's renewable energy goals. Um, again, I'm here with Brendan Kling, who did the civil work and created the plan you're looking at now. Um, he's also gone through all the stormwater steps for this project and can answer any questions. Um, but from here, I'm happy just to hand this back to Madam Chair and the Planning Board for questions. All right. Very nice presentation, Daniel. Clean cut, very detailed. I don't have any issues or questions. 
Any other questions from the other planning board members? I do not have any questions. No questions. Thank you. All right. This is a. Uh, yes. Um, thank you, sir. The fire department access road. How wide is that? Uh, Brendan, feel free to step in with that. Brennan, if you're talking, you're on mute. Um, hear him. All right, I switched. Uh, I switched microphones. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Oh, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, let's see here. So the road, the fire access road, is a 12 foot wide uh, gravel driveway with a uh, 30 foot wide uh, turning radius uh, on the uh, the entrance and the turnaround. Okay. The um... The fire code requires a 20 foot access road or right. fire lane. 20 foot, okay. And where on this is the bat are the batteries going to be? They're going to be at uh, where the it shows the equipment pads here at the southern part of the actual array. So right, right when you drive in, um, there's a inverter and transformer skid and a battery storage skid right there. No, okay, because uh, I, I, when we first note. looked at this, I don't think I ever heard the word battery. Um, but that will go through a separate permitting process. Um, and we'll talk about that in the suppression system for it. Um, but yeah, I'm looking at it, it says uh, transformer neutral ground reactor inverter DC converter uh, BESS. Is that a, the ESS container? Yeah, yeah, bet. Uh, battery storage or battery energy storage system. Yep, sorry about the acronym. Okay, um, I'm used to seeing ESS and not BESS. Okay. Yeah, so um, as you know that these batteries are, um, it's new to Massachusetts and we're going through some code processes and some advisory. So we'll have to review that uh, completely before uh, um, we do any building out there. Absolutely. I'll send you the uh, spec sheets. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, Chief Williams, so you said it requires a 20 foot. So access I would just road. ask that they, uh, correct. I would just ask that they bump it up to a 20 foot access road. Um, and then we'll, wow. once you approve the site, we'll deal with the, uh, the rest of the, um, the building of the project. Does that 20 foot wide access road, um, change anything that was under the conservation jurisdiction? No, no, the access road is entirely outside of uh, conservation jurisdiction. So Brendan, you don't see a problem with um, accommodating the 20 foot? Uh, I think we should be able to do that. Okay. All right, um, there were no other questions from the planning board. We're gonna open up for public comment. Are anyone, you see any hands raised? Uh, Mr. Uh, Attorney James Burke would like to speak. Oh yeah, I was supposed to move him. But I lost my... He's, he is now a panelist. Uh, I'm, I'm here, if you can hear me. Can hear you. There you are, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I forgive you, Pam. <laughs> I was. You know uh, what? I can't do anything when the screen yeah. is shared. It, All right. Uh, I had the pleasure of uh, representing NextGrid uh, both uh, in uh, negotiations with Thorny Lee, the development of the system, uh, and the presentation before the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, as uh, 
uh, Daniel outlined, it's, uh, it's the right thing for the right place at the right time. Uh, the question that uh, Deputy Chief raised, uh, I, I have a question uh, because uh, what you essentially have here is a, a roadway that's been in utilization by the fire department for many, many years in servicing the halfway house. Uh, and it doesn't appear that the requirement for an upgrade uh, would be uh, substantially uh, needed. Uh, I, I'd also suggest that uh, Daniel could take the position, and I think realistically, that since you have uh, a uh, asphalted path of roughly about 10 to 12 feet or so, that you have a gravel base on either side of that uh, asphalted substance. So essentially, uh, you have uh, a 20 foot right of way available to you. It's just not all asphalted, something that neither Next Grid nor Thorny Lee wants. So I, I uh, I, I, I'm concerned about the, uh, the, the last minute interjection of a, a fire department right of way of 20 feet. Uh, I just don't think it's necessary. And I'd like the board to consider that. So madam, may I speak? Yes. Okay. So Jim, I just was looking at this today and uh, didn't notice it. If we, I'm not asking for it to be asphalted. I just want a 20 foot. I thought all gravel would be fine with me. Um, okay, I understand coming in from Thorny Lee Terrace, that's an existing roadway. Right. I'm talking about the roadway that's going out to the solar panels and by the solar panels. Uh, that, uh, that's I the think, new roadway. I, I think that would be substantially less of a problem. Am I right, Daniel? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's how I uh, interpreted what the fire chief was saying. My was apologies. Was the, the internal road would be 20 feet, which is totally fine with us. If, if we need to go into the golf course and expand roads, you know, in what's been there for, I, I believe, 80 years or something like that, that's, that's a call I, I can't even make. So, um, no, Chief, my apologies. I, 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 I understand, and that's absolutely doable. Okay. Very good, thank you. All right, were there any hands raised for the public? There, not, uh, there are not any additional hands raised at the moment. Last okay. call for questions. Would and someone like to none. make a motion. Planning board members, would someone like to make a motion? Motion, yeah. motion to approve 159 Torrey Street. Um, do I need to make a comment about the 20 foot wide road access road in there. Yes. Yeah, we're all clear on where that location is. It's not what the debate was about, but they were, we're clear on that. Clear on that. It does not okay. have to be asphalt gravels fine as long as it's a 20 foot wide access. Motion to approve site plan approval 159 Torrey Street. And I would second that motion. Okay, roll call Larry Lasson. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Pam Abros. Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. All right, thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thanks so thank much. You. All right, we have Belgravia Ave continued. Oh, here we are. Next up would be Pleasant Street. This is for a definitive subdivision. CLM Development Representative W Engineering. I think I got everybody. I moved Evan. I moved it's Charlie. And I you got moved Jim. Charlie. And I don't think there's anybody else. I think you've got them. Madam Chairman, they be, begin their presentation? Yes, I, right, I asked thanks. for the representative. Thank you very much, Madam uh, Chairman. Uh, I, I, uh, my name is uh, Jim Burke. I'm an attorney at law with offices at 48 North Pearl Street in Brockton. And I have the pleasure to represent uh, Charlie Macy. Uh, and assisting me is uh, Evan Watson from W Engineering Group. 
and uh, Charlie uh, put under agreement uh, a significant uh, portion of land uh, for purposes of constructing uh, residential uh, uh, homes, 18 residential lots uh, on an area called uh, now Amelia Estates. And it's off of Chilton, uh, it's off of Westbury. Uh, the property is, uh, is owned by the Carney family, uh, which leads into a, another discussion that uh, I think is important for uh, historical reference for various members of the uh, planning board, many of whom are new. Uh, approximately uh, uh, four years ago, uh, I, was, uh, uh, I was contacted by uh, Mr. Uh, George Carney for purposes of assisting in the development of roughly 41 acres of uh, very uh, fine, very expensive, uh, very treasured land in the city of Brockton in the uh, west side which basically connects uh, from uh, Braymore Road uh, that with also a connection uh, on Chilton Road uh, and then the potential uh, connection on Cypress Road. Uh, at that time, uh, it, it became clear that it was going to be a very large project, one that would have uh, an impact in the city, be extremely impactful on the various neighborhoods. And as a result, uh, we sat down and met with uh, Tim Cruz, who was then the uh, ward counselor for Ward 1, for purposes of establishing some sort of ground rules as a, uh, a courtesy uh, in laying out uh, what the options were for the development of the property. Uh, at that time, uh, the, uh, uh, the, um, the George County uh, project, which is next on your agenda, by the way, uh, Cypress Road, was represented by the engineer Ed Jacobs, who's here tonight and will be speaking. Uh, I understand Ed uh, met with representatives of the planning board as any good engineer would do when they're planning a substantial development uh, and laid forth what the basic options were for the Kearney family in the development of those 41 very useful and treasured acres. What was uh, suggested was the engineer and Mr. Jacobs laid out a, uh, a subdivision as a matter of right. And the subdivision as a matter of right basically connected from Braymore Road through uh, to ultimately Chilton Road and Pleasant Street. Uh, one thing that was absolutely clear in our discussions with the uh, various representatives of the city and elected public officials was that the last thing in the world they wanted was a cut through road from Braymore Road to Pleasant Street. Uh, it was uh, high on everyone's agenda that the development be handled in a different way. Uh, I understand that uh, the planning board was presented uh, with the uh, various options, which included three cul-de-sacs, one from Cyprus, uh, one from uh, uh, Tild uh, Children, uh, and a uh, additional one uh, from uh, Braymore Road. These cul-de-sacs, if constructed, would achieve the result that there would never be a connection or a cut through road from Braymore Road to Pleasant Street in the city. Uh, with that, uh, nothing had been filed with the uh, planning board. It was just a matter of discussion. And I understand that uh, Mr. May and members of the planning board issued some thoughts as to what would be uh, appropriate under the circumstances. But in light of the uh, uh, serious consideration to the impact on the abutters, as well as the, uh, uh, let's say the choices, the preferred choices of the elected representatives of the city, we proceeded to go ahead with uh, the Cypress subdivision first. And the Cypress subdivision uh, basically connects on a road that comes off Rockland and meanders down into Cypress and in with a, uh, a number of residential lots that I'll let uh, uh, Eddie get into in terms of his discussion. We went ahead and prepared, or Eddie did, uh, a, a preliminary subdivision. And within that preliminary subdivision, we presented it to the board uh, and uh, we, we identified on that preliminary subdivision that in fact, it was going to be a, a, a cul-de-sac and also 
identified, I think inconsistent with the report I read today, that they had requested a waiver in that preliminary subdivision, which was noted on the plan, and the waiver was going to be for the road length. We appeared before the Zoning Board of Appeals at some length, uh, and at that time there were numerous individuals who appeared, and the uh, in various individuals were not opposed to the development of Cypress as a cul-de-sac, but their concern lay in the fact that the property uh, would in fact become a cut through to the Braymore neighborhood. It was only after the chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals basically assured them that uh, it was in fact not going to be a cut through, that the cho chosen development of the property was meant to avoid that ultimate outcome, that the uh, various members of the Braymore community were in fact uh, uh, mollified. Toward that end, uh, and it's the reason was that the uh, chairman put in a condition in the Zoning Board of Appeals decision granting a reduction in the size of those lots that the uh, uh, road would not connect to any other road. Again, I think that was based on what the, it was identified as the understanding of the best interest of the community in the city and how to develop the property. That's a history. Now we talk to uh, uh, Charlie Macy and his specific property. Charlie and Evan went ahead and had the uh, opportunity to prepare a proposed subdivision. Uh, and they went right to a definitive subdivision to give to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And within that, uh, they requested that the uh, planning board give a waiver as to road length, which uh, as the uh, planner and I'm sure various members of the planning board are aware or are now aware is clearly within the province and purview of the uh, planning boards uh, under body one uh, of the mass general laws. This in fact would have been, and I think is the first instance that that waiver uh, was before the planning board for determination of the appropriateness. And there is a procedure uh, for the planning board to determine that in fact, it, it's consistent with the interests under 41 uh, and within the best interest of the uh, surrounding community. I would suggest, I, I read uh, a, uh, a, a note on one of the reports today that seemed to indicate that we had not requested relief uh, under that section of Mass General Law Chapter 41. In fact, uh, if you take a look at the, uh, the waiver request uh, that was filed as part of the application, uh, by uh, uh, Evan. It clearly identifies that the application pursuant to 41 section 81R requests that the planning board make a finding that in this particular subdivision, a waiver of a lot frontage is required under the zoning ordinance of the city of Brockton is in the public interest and not inconsistent with the intent and purpose of the subdivision control law. A reduction from 175 feet to 125 feet is requested. As the planning board or members of the planning board are aware, it has been reasonably consistent uh, within the past year, two or three, that the Zoning Board of Appeals looks to lot sizes that are generally in the 125 feet range. We thought that was consistent with in fact the roadway. So we have gone out and we have paid for uh, the review by beta engineering uh, which is an honest broker and uh, uh, I think it generally does a good job in their review. Evan provided some immediate responses uh, to uh, Bevan uh, Beta's initial comments. And essentially, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are down to one issue, one major issue. And that is whether or not the board will approve by granting a waiver under section 81 81L, uh, or rather, excuse me, 81R, to grant a waiver uh, to allow a roadway that exceeds 700 feet under the ordinances. One of the things that I noticed in the planning board staff report as I reviewed it today was a language that the planning board cannot be granted or the waiver cannot be granted. In fact, that can't be further from the truth in terms of compliance with the, the state uh, uh, law. 
In fact, 81R gives to the uh, uh, planning board a large measure of judgment uh, or discretion in making that determination. What did we did was we sat down with Chief Williams, we sat down with uh, the planner uh, in order to try to find a, a reasonable accommodation and how to meet what uh, we thought was in the best interest of the uh, 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 city of Brockton and uh, as described to us by various members of the elected public officials and a large volume of abutters on the Braymore Road neighborhood. And what we did was we established an understanding that the adjacent subdivision, which will come up next, Cypress Road and Amelia Estates would be connected, but it would be connected for purposes of emergency vehicle access. How that is done, and it's done in numerous communities outside of the city, uh, mostly in, in uh, residential towns and uh, suburban residential towns, is that you can either create a uh, a lockbox uh, in which uh, the fire department, the police department, and uh, the uh, ambulance services would have the ability to go through Cyprus and enter into the roadway for emergency purposes only. As identified uh, by uh, uh, the, the planner, one of the issues that you face is there could be a fallen tree, which would affect the ability uh, to uh, get access for uh, a particular public safety reason. That's specifically the request of what we had constructed both with the assistance of Evan and the consistence of uh, Ed Jacobs uh, for the two subdivisions, which uniquely enough, while it is in the Kearney family, uh, the, it does not have uniformity in ownership of each of the subdivisions. So uh, in addition to the uh, public safety right of way that could be by breakaway fence or lockbox, we agreed to install and connect an easement uh, for water purposes. So when Cypress connected its roadway, we would loop the water uh, with the Amelia Estates subdivision. That is nothing but a benefit to the community. In spite of that, we met with Larry Raleigh from the Department of Public Works. And Larry assured us, and I believe he assured Chief Williams, that there was still sufficient pressure uh, as it stood to service the Amelia States subdivision as designed. I think that's significant. But in addition to that, Larry, uh, excuse me, Charlie Macy went one step further. He entered into a basic agreement with the deputy chief that because there would be some uncertainty because the Cypress subdivision uh, it built will be built substantially after uh, the uh, Amelia Estate subdivision that is now shovel ready, that we would sprinkle the residential houses and put residential sprinkler system throughout them for fire protection purposes. So I suggest it is ultimately gonna be before this board to make a decision. And they certainly have the complete authority to approve this roadway link. I would suggest that it is in fact been a condition that we've seen in Brockton uh, in, the, in the recent past with, with some of the exceptional subdivisions in the community. I point out that uh, uh, Goldfinch Drive, which is in the general neighborhood is 1800 square feet, excuse me, it's a roadway length of 1800 feet, and it does not have an emergency connection like we are offering. That the Athens Drive and Amasha Drive is 1300 square feet, well in excess of the 700 feet, and it does not have an emergency access as we are proposing. I'd suggest Briarcliff Drive that I was involved with in the development, both in the zoning and the planning stage, is 1100 square feet all extremely high upscale Brockton subdivisions. And it does not have an emergency access to provide public safety purposes if in fact there is emergency situation. So I'm gonna let Evan go ahead and give you some of the nuts and bolts of the subdivision. 
but I want the board to clearly understand it is entirely within their discretion as to whether or not we build a as of right subdivision that goes from Braymore Road to Pleasant Street, or we construct the subdivisions as we have proposed here. It falls within the discretion of this board to make that decision. What the Carney family wants to do is to live up to the promise and representation that they made to the community when they started this project in 2017. Evan, go ahead. Thank you very much. <clears throat> that was uh, nice and clear, Attorney Burke, that, that helped me understand the process of where we are as well. Um, I could share my screen here if I'm allowed. There should be no restrictions on your screen. Yep. Okay, so I have a, a Google Earth uh, image up here that just reminds us of where we are. Um, again, we are south of Pleasant Street. We're east of Rockdale Drive, and we're west of the, the golf course here, north of Cypress and Braymore. Attorney Burke so astutely mentioned, this is kind of a unique piece of property where it's an, an open uh, section here on the west side of town. And we're adding on to uh, the Chilton Road subdivision. Uh, we were left with a piece of property here with the sole intent of extending this road. So we come down to an intersection in the southeast corner and it splits off onto two cul-de-sacs where we show 18 residential lots. So here's um, a colored up plan of, of the design plans. And again, you, I've kind of colored it up a little bit just so we have an understanding of, of what we're gonna be looking at. Um, we're asking for no waivers on the width of the road. We have a full 50 foot right of way, the prescribed width of pavement. Uh, we are asking for a, a reduction in the actual sidewalk uh, hardened surface. So uh, the requirement is for eight feet of sidewalk. Uh, we do provide eight feet of sidewalk with a five foot of bituminous asphalt, two and a half foot grass strip and a half foot granite curbing. Holly, that is the, re uh, Evan, that is the requirement. I know we had this discussion mm -hmm. and it's an eight foot wide layout. Yes, so so that's pr that's provided for sure. Right, and so, so you don't need a waiver because you've got an eight foot wide layout, five feet of sidewalk, the grass strip and the um, and the granite curbing. Okay, very good. Pam, um, I was under what, what they are asking for is a um, a waiver from the concrete sidewalk, is what I'm hearing. Well, that's a separate issue, but their their layout is 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 eight feet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Very good. It's kind of yeah, lumped yeah. that together. Right. So the, the, uh, concrete is a separate right. issue. And thank you, Pam. Um, yeah, so we're looking to match into what's existing here. So we have asphalt and we would like to do continue with asphalt around on both sides. Um, is Westbury is asphalt? Yeah, I took a look at um the the aerial image and it it looks like blacktop to me. And I, I think I remember when we brought the equipment. We did some test pits out there. Uh, we were concerned about breaking it, so um, it's out there. Um, so we provide, pre, uh, prepared a full set of design plans. Uh, we have the definitive uh, subdivision plans. We have the property line surveyed all in with all the monuments shown. Each, show easements for the uh, drainage basins, show easement for our water connection, which I'll, I'll highlight in a moment. General, the property slopes from the west side, north is to the right, by the way. So um, the high point is here and everything, all the existing drainage flows down in this direction towards the farm and the golf course. Uh, so there's no stormwater heading to any of the uh, residential properties. And uh, our development basically continues the uh, 
storm water flow. We have um, designed our roads so that we maintain existing drainage patterns. We have a detention basin down here that collects from the stormwater network. All of the roadway goes to this detention basin here, which has um, an access easement to it. And it has a 20-foot uh, wide gravel road that goes around it. Uh, we met with DPW and fire services and they asked for that. So, so we have that provided. Um, you can see too that I think there was some talk about the shape of these lots. Uh, they extend uh, into this corner but it all works out pretty well because that's where the detention basin is anyhow. So I, I can't foresee any um, land disputes or anything because this is this will all be encumbered by the drainage easement. This graphic, this sheet here, we show the waterline easement like we were discussing. So that saddles these two lots, takes a turn up and it meets um, a lot line with the, the proposed uh, subdivision that's coming in. You'll see that in a moment. Uh, Eddie and I were able to, to get together and make sure that those lines match exactly. And we'd be able to commit to extending that water line and leaving it there. So when the next uh, group comes along, they could tie in, or if they're in first, we can connect right into theirs. Uh, we have road plans and profiles. We did some uh, test pits to check out the depth to bedrock. So we made sure that you're above that. Uh, we, we actually don't have too many issues on this site here. Have to really elevate the road to accommodate um, that or to, to cut into blast or anything for the um, water line. Let me show uh, details. We did add a, um, a light pole. Uh, we, we are ask, um, providing lighting now. I think on the initial submission, we, we didn't have that Like uh, attorney Burke was saying, we did um, send this out to beta group. They did a thorough review. Uh, they had a few comments. So we were able to make some slight revisions to the plan. There was no major revisions to the overall layout. They had a few comments on some of the technical basis of the drainage piping and, and things of that nature, which we revised, they reviewed. And they actually got us back uh, in a nice timely manner another comment letter, um, which I don't see any thing in that comment letter that we wouldn't be able to. Um, uh, sorry, Mr. W Mr. Watson, if I could just interject here and we're yes. running short on time here. Um, does the Pretty planning department enough. have the report back from better? No, I don't have a second report back. They didn't finish the review. May, May 24th, 2021 was the last that I got. Was the last. Okay, and that's the one that I sent you that said we don't expect you to address it for tonight's meeting. Yes, I'm sorry, Pam. We received a letter from, I believe, the, the city uh, from your report uh, and some input from the town departments asking us about um, some of the things when we first submitted like the uh, the light poles and the um, right. fire uh, pole boxes and things like that so we made those changes and you're right these are the um, the things that came okay. from data okay and um just want to stick to the the major issues if we can uh, being considered of time so this road being 2200 I understand you brought some history to life uh, regarding Goldfish being 1200 or something like that, but you Thank know, you. when does it stop? When do we stop exceeding the regulations? Um, the plan to connect with these other subdivisions sounds good. Uh, um, Chief Williams, you were involved with that. You, you are in favor. How do you see this working? Yes. Um and correct me if I'm wrong, Evan or uh, Attorney Burke. Um, they had agreed to give easements, uh, one directly over to Cypress for a water hookup so the two could communicate. And then they said that an easement would be available through the drainage easement, if I'm correct, that where um, they could connect with uh, the end of Braymore Road could connect for a water purpose um, with this subdivision. So everything's, um, looped around it. 
And is that correct? That's absolutely correct. But in addition, uh, the Braemar Road was going to be of sufficient size and construction to uh, now allow another emergency access roadway for fire, police, and emergency vehicles coming from Braemar to accomplish the exact same feat that we're attempting to do with Cypress. Okay, but we're, I mean, I'm just concerned with the water pressure on each side. You know, you, if you go all the way up Braemore, you tend to lose some of that pressure, but- nope, No um, question that we, we have committed to uh, looping the water up to our lot line. Okay, very good. And all the 18 houses um, in the subdivision will be sprinkled to the uh, NFPA 13 uh, D standard, which is for single family and two family houses. You, you've got me built. Uh, you know, every day of the week on regulations, Chief. But what they committed, <laughs> what they committed to do, was to sprinkle the homes in the in our discussion with you. Yes. Okay. Then, yeah, Madam Chairman. Yes. Uh, as long as they're sprinkling it, and uh, we're going to loop the water together, um, the fire department um, would be in favor of it. Our concern, again, is you know, in the case of fire, people are going to be able to get out of their houses and the sprinkler system would allow them to do that. Um, so thank you very much. Okay, so that covers the um, fire piece, but um, the emergency road access, and we're still waiting for the review by BETA, correct? Correct. Right. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, I, the plans that we have in front of us on file do not reflect the beta comment nor do they show the emergency road connection um, that, that we talked about. So I, I assume that that will be on a revision set that come uh, sometime in the near future. Absolutely. And uh, I do want to uh, make a comment to Attorney Burke um, in editing the staff report, I found most of the cannot and change them to should not. Um, obviously, I missed one. Um, so uh, there is one, there should only be one cannot, and that is um, regarding a, a recommendation of the, to the planning board that we should not or cannot make blanket waivers. Um, I think there's somewhere in the application, I think it's your application, I apologize it is. if I'm incorrect, it is. Um, that if, if we missed something uh, in our application and it shows up on the plan, then we should be uh, forgiven for that. Um, and uh, it has been brought to our attention um, uh, that we need to make sure that the application actually has the uh, specific waivers in it. So, in fact, they do, uh, and uh, thank you. But it was my creativity. I apologize, uh, Mr. Planner, uh, but I, I would request. Good try. Is there is <laughs> is there a specific section of the rules and regulations that prevent blanket waivers? Historically, uh, haven't asked for it. You don't. Yeah. But, but is it. is there? I asked for it. Is there a specific section <laughs> of the uh, rules and regulations to prohibit a request for uh, comprehensive waivers? I, I do not know, and I will have to, to uh, check that out. We have been informed by a, an attorney that um, each waiver needs to be listed separately on the application. Oops, sorry. As, I, ring as I think we have done in this instance, yes. Yeah. Was there also um, specifically um, noted in the approval letter? So. Okay, thanks. So, uh, you know, another concern, this is, this gets tricky. The emergency plan is based on if, uh, Cypress is passed, which isn't, it has not been yet. So it's not like we can count on this plan. It, it sounds good. It looks good on paper, but until Cypress is passed, it's not solid. Well, Cypress is coming next. 
uh, and they want to get it passed uh, and they want to get it built just as uh, Emilia wants to get it built. Uh, you you mentioned. I, I, yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'll you know, you, you, you brought up a question that I had because, you know, this, your, this plan here would be finished before Cyprus. So how long would we wait for the emergency access to be created? Well, again, I'll, 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 I'll leave that maybe to, to Ed Jacobs to have a better handle on. I can't, I can't give you the timing, uh, right. but uh, you know, you're, you're, you're roughly 300 feet larger than Goldfinch, uh, and Goldfinch has, has successfully existed uh, as constructed, and I, and I think that uh, in terms of the public safety issues, uh, I think the majority of them are covered uh, with the, the uh, sprinkling system and the good faith attempt uh, by the developer to provide the emergency access provides a further relief and security yeah. blanket uh, for the city and its emergency vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't on the board when they approved Goldfinch. I do know that road. Um, I don't remember, actually there are some trees at the entrance. So, you know, God forbid a tree goes down and they can't get in or out of there. Um, so I can't speak for the other board members that passed that. They might, maybe they shouldn't have. And, and I, I suggested, uh, Madam Chairman, when, 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 when Rob mentioned it, and I, and I understand the concern, it, same thing could happen in a 400-foot subdivision mm -hmm. when the tree goes down. But we're still faced with waiting for the beta group to review the final plan. I mean, well, to give their recommendations, it's still under review. So we, we're still locked there, correct? I, I, I believe that's accurate. That's an accurate okay. statement. Sure. So your option um, is- Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Yes, Rob. I was going to say, I, I doubt this is going to be approved tonight because Beta hasn't um, right. provided a final report and we don't have a final set of plans. But there are folks who would like to, uh, attendees who would like to testify and um, okay. have their opinions known. And, um, Considering that this will probably be continued to the next meeting, we might want to take that testimony and get that uh, done tonight. So if there are folks with their hands raised, can you please um, keep your questions, comments to 30 seconds or less? Please, no repetitive questions or comments. And who will you take first, Mr. May? So ladies and gentlemen who are attendees, if you wish to address the planning board, please use the raise your hand function, which should be at the bottom of your screen. Um, you can also write questions in the Q&A function also at the bottom of your screen. And um, we will read those out online. So did Pam, did you move somebody in? I did move somebody. He was the only one to raise his hand. John, um, you are live. John, yes. Good morning. Uh, yeah, good the evening. Other subdivision. Um, good morning. Have, it feels like morning. Um, I have a question that maybe Attorney Burke uh, or the engineers can answer, and I didn't hear any discussion. All, all I heard regarding the discussion was the extension of the roadway. But nowhere did I hear tonight about how 14 of the 18 lots that they're seeking are, are non-conforming with respect to frontage. Are they planning on going to the ZBA? Uh, what is the, uh, how, how do they propose getting that relief? John, I apologize. You missed the early part of my presentation. I believe it's recently been determined within the city that the proper procedure for subdivisions seeking uh, frontage relief is to utilize the provisions of uh, chapter 41, which specifically authorizes uh, communities uh, under 81R to grant frontage relief as part of the definitive subdivision. So whereas in Cyprus, which I represented uh, the Kearney family, we went to the Zoning Board of Appeals and secured relief uh, for that frontage. Under this instance in the definitive subdivision, we've requested a waiver under uh, 81R. And I, I would highlight for the board that there's case law, uh, specifically Arrigo versus the Planning Board of Franklin, uh, 12 Mass Appeals Court 802, 1981, and it, and it holds, and I quote, 
a waiver of the frontage requirements of the subdivision control law by the planning board is not a variance. A landowner still needs to obtain a zoning variance from the Board of Appeals. It, it, it seems to me that this is an attempt by the developer to try to short circuit the amount of potential opposition he may get or they may get. And, and, and the case law is unequivocally clear that even if a frontage waiver is obtained from the planning board, there still must be a variance from the zoning board. Um, secondly, as the chair spoke, uh, you, you're attempting to take a roadway that is 1,100 feet and double it to 2,200. Uh, now, whether or not that is according to uh, case law, as you stated, in the best interest of the surrounding community and not inconsistent, I would suggest what you're attempting to do is to say the Braemore folk, we don't want to upset. But everybody who lives on Chilton, oh well, you're the new subdivision and we're just going to have all the traffic flow come through that subdivision. It, it seems to me that um, on two, two, two steps here, one, the board does not have the legal authority according to case law, and two, it seems to me to be inequitable how the Chilton neighbors are being treated as opposed to the other neighbors within the city. Uh, John, if I may speak, uh... I respectfully disagree with you in Arigio. Uh, Arigio was decided when I was a young lawyer. Uh, I'm very familiar with it. I've been involved in a number of cases. And I think that if you take another look, you'll, you'll discover that the issue of a variance went to a separate section of land that was under discussion, uh, but not within the subdivision itself. And I believe there are a significant number of cases that clearly state uh, that uh, there is no requirement uh, to go to uh, any other board for permitting on frontage issues in the utilization of 81R. But that's something I can provide you outside of hearing, and I'm happy to do that. Yep. And, and in my 30 years of practicing law, I'm not aware of the city of Brockton doing what you're asking them to do. We uh, have been pushed into it, uh, Attorney Canavao, because that is the new process that has been established within the city of Brockton, not by this developer, uh, but by the city of Brockton. And I'm here on behalf of an abutter who opposes the project. Thank you. I also would like to highlight uh, for the new members of the board that at the April hearing, uh, it was uh, two and a half hours into the meeting uh, and I was not allowed to speak on behalf of my client and abutter but rather was told, oh, it's just going to be an informational meeting. So I do want to let the board know that I was here for two and a half hours plus at the April meeting without the opportunity to speak. But I have nothing further to say. Um, uh, John, could you send that information about the case that you just cited um, to uh, uh, the planning department at planning at cobma.us so we can have our city solicitor review that? I've already spoken. I spoke with the city solicitor after the April meeting and gave her the case citation, but I'll absolutely send it again to Megan. Okay, thank you, because we didn't follow up, or we she didn't follow up with us about that. Uh, Madam Chair, I have two questions um, that have been typed in, and um, I would like to let one of them, the anonymous attendee, um, because these are official public meetings, um, we need to have your name. Um, so if you could retype with your name on that, we would appreciate it. Uh, the first question is from Jessica Hannon Courier, and I hope I pronounced that right. And it says, can the plot plan be brought back up uh, and someone show us where the proposed emergency access road made link may likely be built. So Evan, can you bring up the plan? Thank you. If you can see that. So I've, this is the plan that I uh, brought along with me in the last meeting, but the informal meeting, um, but I've highlighted on here where we added on. So this is um, Westbury Road coming down. And so there would be a, a gravel access road uh, with a gate that would be here at the, uh, in between the, the lots. Um, and then there would also be an access road that would come down to the detention basin. And that would have a gate also in between. 
uh, that gate have a, would have a lock on it uh, that the fire department would use. A lot of times, a lot of communities use like what's called a knock box. So there's a, a box on the gate that has a standard lock from the fire department. They use their key to open that box and use the key to unlock the gate. So that wouldn't be used as a, a conventional road for cars. You wouldn't be able to park there or use it as a separate driveway or anything else like that. Okay, thank you. I think, I think he that, also that just also answered, answered the, the anonymous. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, but, I read ahead. Um, again, public hearing, in, if you could provide your name, we would appreciate it. Just for the record. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Comments from the community? I do not see. Oh. I have one more just popped up. Ah, Louisa, thank you. Soros? Soros, thank you. Um, any other questions from the community? I do not see any at this time, Madam Chair. Um, do want to say that if we are, oh, here we go. Uh, Jessica um, Ryan Courier, uh, again, Chief Williams, do you know how often cul-de-sacs actually get locked, get landlocked? Ugh, let me start this over again. Chief Williams, do you know how often cul-de-sacs actually get landlocked and why it would be necessary for two access roads. I guess I do not know how often they get landlocked and I'm not sure if all cul-de-sacs are actually landlocked. And in some cases, uh, they do get a, a second access road. Um, I'm myself is not, I'm not that concerned about the second access road. Um, I'm content with the water systems being looped and I'm content with the buildings being sprinkled. That kind of answers our concern. Uh, there's other concerns about that people have about emergency access. Um, but in honesty, I don't have a lot of faith in uh, the emergency access roads and the homeowners association maintaining them and plowing them and stuff like that. No, oh, good. Thank you. Good point. Um, Madam Chair, uh, seeing that this is going to be continued um, until we get the beta letter and the revised plan set, um, we should probably ask the uh, applicant to um, freeze the clock. Um, and if they could submit something in writing, we would appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Macy. Yeah, that's agreed to. And uh, we will go ahead and provide that to you tomorrow, if that's okay. Thank you very much. Send you the form. Well, uh, thank you, Pam. Uh, thank you. Everything has a form. Yeah, Sounds everything good. has a form. Sounds good. Was a board member ready to make a motion for a continuance and uh, to freeze the statutory time clock? Motion to continue definitive subdivisions. Pleasant Street. Need to continue it to the date certain, or they're going to have to re-notify and republish. So, what date? Oh God, no! Suggesting what date are we recommending? We go into the next meeting. Your next meeting is August. 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 What is that? August third. Third. Motion to continue. August third. Now you threw me off. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Is there a second? Second, second that. <laughs> All right. Second by James. Roll call. Larry Hassan. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Sam Abros. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Thank you. We Thank continue. You. All right. Next, we're up for Jim. Do you stay on? I do. Yes. I. I I'm pleased to stay on. We get to stay with you, how nice. All right, <laughs> definitive subdivision for Cypress Drive. Are you opening, Jim? 
I am. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Uh, um, is Mr. Kelly representing? Um, Mr. Kelly and uh, is, is a uh, uh, is is a representative of the Carney family, uh, and Ed Jacobs uh, will be making the presentation. And I think uh, if there are specific questions, Mr. Kelly can address them. But I believe the presentation will basically be through myself. Uh, and, okay, and, I moved him anyway. Uh, okay. And again, I'm an attorney at law with offices at 48 North Pearl Street in Brockton, Massachusetts. And I have the pleasure of representing uh, Mr. George Carney uh, for the uh, subdivision uh, that is proposed uh, for uh, Cypress Drive. Uh, and if it's, uh, if it's possible and acceptable to the board, I'll incorporate uh, by reference the comments that I made uh, to uh, the board in relation to the historical analysis uh, of the uh, uh, Carney family and its uh, acquisition and development of the 41 acres, which is now part of uh, Cypress Drive. Uh, essentially, uh, to reiterate, uh, this is one of the subdivisions, one of the three legs that were uh, established by Ed, and Ed can show those photos to you now that have been around since uh, 2018 at least. Uh, and Ed, you want to take it from there? You got to unmute. Okay. Do you see the? Uh, can you see the screen? Which says uh, the, yes. the plan, Sean. Okay. Yes. As as was mentioned by Attorney Burke uh, earlier, um, this subdivision was uh, approved as a preliminary subdivision uh, by the board back in two thousand and nineteen. And then we went to the uh, ZBA and got approval um, for the waiver frontage on the uh, on the 17 lots. And now we're back in front of the board with a definitive subdivision plan. Um, and what I want to show you is um, how this all ties together. Now, Evan showed you a little bit earlier. Um, His subdivision, uh, Amelia Estates, and if you look at on on this plan, this would be Amelia Estates right here, coming off of Westbury Road, and this is the subdivision right here. Our subdivision comes off of Cypress Drive and comes up through here, and this is where they both meet, right down this line right here. This is where Braymore Road comes in, and this land will be left vacant for now. But you've heard talk about a possible subdivision coming in here with a third cul-de-sac. Um, I'm going to keep this very brief because we don't even have comments back from Bader, so I just want to give you guys just a quick overview of what the subdivision look like. looks like. All the lots have 30,000 square feet, and the smallest lot frontage is 127 and a half feet on the straightaways, and up at the cul-de-sac, the frontage at the setback line um, is what we asked for a waiver for on... Um, in front of the ZBA uh, that's at the building setback line. Um, they're like 117, 117 and 115 feet, but the lot sizes are much larger. And if you look right here where my uh, cursor is, this is where the water line will be looping through and tying into Evans subdivision over here, Melior Estates. This is his line coming up through here with his easement and it'll be tying in right here. And this is also where we would be putting in if approved, the access easement right on top of the water line coming up through here. I have had discussions with our client and they are not opposed to sprinkling the houses either. Um, this is the plan that shows how it would be graded, where the drainage would be. Now, the drainage comes down, much as Evan had said, from the north east down towards the southwest. Uh, the drainage ponds would be down in this area down here catching all the drainage um, and off it would go down through the swale and dissipate before it even reaches um, the wetlands and the brook down there. And like I said, I'm just gonna keep this very brief. It's 17 lots. The, um, the street length is 1,460 feet, give or take. And um, 17 lots, they all meet the front, uh, they all meet the area and 
we did some test pits out there. There was some lead shown. That's what these little triangles are down in here. These, this is all where the ledge elevations are. So what we did in the road design is we picked up the road an average of four to five feet so that all the pipes uh, will be out of the ledge. There'll be a minimum uh, blast area right at the top of this crest right here. Only about 40 feet of the road should need to be fractured or, or blasted. And that would only be for the water line and the sewer line. And it's been a long night for you people. I don't want to really keep you. It's just an introduction right now. Um, Beta has the plans and uh, they've got the check late, I think on the 26th or the 27th. So we don't even have any comments back from them. I'm anticipating getting comments and making the revisions and having um, more to talk about in August. Okay, any other, anyone else presenting? Nope, that's I, it. I believe not. Um, all right, Chief Williams, do you have anything? No, I'm good. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Okay. Any other planning board members? So these these two projects are both working in cohesion. Uh, well, they, they're very disparate projects uh, with a, uh, a different ownership structure. Mm -hmm. However, in cohesion is a great word. It means they're cooperating with the best interest uh, of the city and the approval process. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and so it's faced with the same situation as the previous one, waiting for Beta to, re to um, send their recommendations. So I don't know if there's any, any of these people want, have any comments? So oh, if the so, board is done uh, with their questions, I would ask the chair to see if uh, anybody from the public would like to speak. If anyone from the public would like to speak, please raise your hand. Or type uh -huh. in your question. Mary Beth, I have moved forward. So Mary Beth, if you would like to unmute and uh, Turn on your camera would be great. Mary Beth, if you could unmute yourself and your camera. Or at least unmute yourself, but you're free to speak now. He's trying. Hello. Hello. Hi, Paul. Paul Corey, 82 Cypress Drive. Hello. Hi. Um, yes, I understand the uh, attorney up front on North Pearl Street there said that the, a waiver uh, was already granted as to the frontage uh, uh, on the proposed Cypress Drive subdivision. Why, why was that granted if Cypress Drive is a fully conforming subdivision? Why were they granted relief on the new proposed subdivision? I'm not exactly is sure how to a... answer that question, uh, but uh, uh, in fact, in order to uh, 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 build the lots that were substandard sized at that time, it was a requirement that you first go to the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals prior to uh, making a determination of the definitive subdivision, and that's what we did and they secured relief. Oh. I guess that's a surprise to me because I, at a prior meeting, uh, the chair had, um, the prior chair before his retirement had stated that Cypress Drive and uh, was a fully conforming subdivision and that there weren't gonna be any waivers met. And also Mr. Cruz over on, uh, I think it's Fairview Ave, uh, reiterated the same. And I just don't know how we went from having no waivers and, and variances to now all of a sudden we do. I've attended every meeting for the past few months. And well, the variance, we went in front of the zoning board in 2020. 
for this subdivision. Okay. All right. Well, maybe okay. I wasn't. Maybe I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, we had to. Uh, we we went with the prelim. The way it worked back in Brockton back then is we went to the planning board with a prelim, which showed the 125 feet of frontage, 127 and a half feet of frontage on the lots, and they approved it verbally. And then the then we had to go in front of the ZBA because that was a process back then. And we showed them the same plan and they approved the uh, the plan as well, showing 127 and a half feet of frontage on the lots well, instead of the 175. All right, well, th thank you. I, it sounds like it's a done deal now, uh, but it's just a, a little bit surprising to me that I was unaware of that even taking place. Well, that they, 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 they would be asking for that. I would have spoke up at the time if time was available to, to do so. Is there anyone else raising their hand, Rob? Uh, Madam Chair, I have a, a written question from Joe Nasrallah uh, that says that in the March uh, 2020 meeting, the zoning board acknowledged that there is an existing problem with water runoff from this area to Braymore Road. They suggested that this can be addressed. Can you explain how this has been addressed? Ed, Ed Jacobs is the answer to that. Yeah, we've captured all the water with swales before it reaches that vacant land I showed you earlier um, that's going to be left vacant for Braymore. And it runs into detention ponds, which will handle the runoff. It'll dissipate over time. And there'll be what we're a lot, what we're, um, have to do by law in Massachusetts is have zero net increase uh, for stormwater runoff. And that will be all taken care of um, through peer review with beta. So once we get their review back, if they have any questions on the drainage, that will all be addressed then. Okay, thank you. Um, and I, I don't know if you want to show that on your drawing, um, pull that up, that's up to the chair. Um, and then uh, I do have another question here, but it's from a, uh, a case that we opened, but um, we were waiting to hear back from attorney Paul Clancy and um, Mario Andre would like to continue to the next um, planning board meeting, which is August 3rd. Okay. That's for LaFoy Street. Yes, Pam is nodding. Okay. Thank you, Mario. Any other questions from the community? I don't see any other questions. Okay. So, oh, me, hang on just a second. Um, Jessica, um, Hannon Courier, uh, actually it'd be best if you could put the, the plan up so that you can, so you can point to it um, where your detention pond is and how that blocks the runoff. So if you look at this plan up here is the top of the hill, right about here is the apex. Um, from here down, the, the water's gonna run this way and we have a swale coming down, a pipe coming down this way to a swale right here. So this will go by pipe two, two, into two catch basins down a pipe and exit right here and start running down this way. None of the water is going to reach this over here. Now I'm gonna go back up to the other sheet. This, this will match right here. Come down into this detention pond right here. The water will collect right here. It'll dissipate, some of it will fill up. It'll spill over into here. This is a third detention pond right here. And then this has an emergency overflow and we'll come down into here into this swale with check dams and just dissipate down into the swale. Nothing's happening from here down. This is just going to be left uh, as it is this property right here and it will eventually work across here and into the wetlands. Okay, and you can see on the very um, bottom of that page uh, that is the last house on Braymore, is that correct? It is, correct.
Um, she continues to ask, what about the current problem? And I don't know what her address is. If she could let us know what her address is so we can see it on the on a map to know where she is. Um, and we can figure out where, um, okay, it's 225. Blame She's the last, last house on the right. Last house on the right of Braymore. On the right, so that's the south side of the street. Excuse me, the east side of the street. I would think so, because that's the house we're showing there is two twenty. So she's across the street, right? Which you don't obviously see on the map. No. So this, but you you see that from Ed's drawing that there is a, a series of detention ponds that run north to south that divide this property off. Um, so anything coming from the proposed development lot runs into these um, ponds. Now, if there's water coming from, and I can see the topography here, um, uh, coming from due north, um, that obviously does not go into the pond uh, mm -hmm. because that is outside of the uh, of the project boundary. Right. The the topography, as you can see right here, is coming down this way. This will all be gathered into this pond. So the water that this this um, abutter is getting is most likely coming from here. This is a large knob of ledge right here, and this is probably coming down through here and running into Braymore. That is still going to be doing that, unfortunately, but this water that was coming down here before and going onto the property will be interrupted right here and go this way now. So hopefully there'll be a, uh, a decrease in groundwater traveling towards her destination. Okay, any other questions, Mr. Rob, Mr. May? Um, I have no, uh, I see no hands raised. Um, I think you all have been emailed a, um, a petition and uh, comments from uh, neighbors as well as a recent email from Councillor Farwell, but um, I they have not received Councillor Farwell's because it came in. Oh, they, no, it went to the planning board, didn't it? I forward to uh, a, a reason that came in uh, late, and I think she has it. Okay. Um, um, but, but none of those issues that Councillor Farwell is addressing are on any of these plans. So, no, it went to us. It went to us, but yes. Oh, it just went to pl planning department. Planning department, but it'll be added into the um, public comment. The file. Into the file. And the, um, yes, the petition was added into their Google Drive. So they all had access to okay. that. Again, most okay. of that was dealing so, with Braymore Road. So, Madam Chair, uh, I don't see any more. Uh, attendees who want to um, ask questions. If there are no more questions from the planning board, you may want to continue this to the August 3rd meeting and um, wait freeze for the beta the report. So and the, freeze the clock. Thank you. Does someone want to make a motion uh, to continue this to the conference. August meeting and freeze the clock? Yes, Madam Chair, I'll make that motion um, to continue this matter to August 3rd and freeze the clock. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Second. Roll call, Larry Hassan. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Sam Abros. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Okay. Thank and you. Has the applicant has the applicant agreed to a freeze? I'll get I'll get I'll, I'll talk to Pam and whatever Pam wants, she'll get <laughs> the next form. And wants so my cake. we also need to make um, a motion to continue LaFoy Street. Thank you. 
Um, if there's anyone here from the community for this being continued, I don't think there's any questions. Rob, can you confirm that? Uh, any questions on LaFoy as we continue it? Well, we didn't open it, so we can't no. take- um, Okay, all right. That sums money. that up. Okay, a motion then to continue 63 LaFoy Street. Motion to continue 63 LaFoy Street for permission to return to ZBA to August 3rd. Second. Okay, roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sam Sweeney? Yes. Sam Abros? Yes. Monique Gonzalez? Yes. All right. And did I miss anything, Pam, on the agenda? No. Okay, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. You can't make the motion, somebody has to else make it. I was asking motion someone to, to make adjourn. It. Second. I do. All in favor? Yes. 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 Pam, yes. yes. I do right. have a question. Do, do we have to come in next week to sign anything? You'll let us know? Um, yes, there'll be quite a bit for you to sign. And right. um, I'll shoot you all an email, and we are open to the public. So you'll be coming into City Hall to sign. Okay. Just wear a mask. All right, and thank wear you a all mask. For because and you and thank you to the public. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair.